Hey everybody, Corey from Corey and Co-op. Today, you're really living the day in the life. Normally when I film, I would clean a bunch of this crap up. Instead, I wanted to show you guys, you know, what my fish room really looks like and what I have to do normally to film. You can see there's just kind of boxes and stuff everywhere. This accumulates throughout the week. Now, I will admit it's been about two weeks since I've done a cleanup. The reason I'm sprucing up right now is I got Aquapros coming in tomorrow. It's gonna hang out for a day or two. We'll talk, you know, maybe we can collaborate, maybe we can do something. We haven't, haven't any guests, like real guests, in a few years from the pandemic. So here we have a shirt. We're designing a new, what we call an evergreen shirt. What does that mean? That means this shirt is gonna, you know, we're gonna sell it for a very, very, very long time. This isn't a limited edition drop or anything like that. But why is it next to this one? Quality control. I, I test everything and this shirt did not make it past quality control. So it was a little plain. I like the enjoy nature daily aspect, but just having green made it look cheap. We've got another version coming out that uh, I think I'm gonna like a lot more. I've seen the proofs of it. And on the back, we have kind of the aquarium co-op that matches similar to the hat, the baseball hat. What I didn't like about this was it looked a little too plain. And then I was like, the shirt feels slightly different. No one else in my company noticed, which is fine. I think there's something wrong with me that makes me notice the slightest inconsistencies. So these shirts are the exact same from the vendor. One's made in Honduras and one's made in Haiti. And that was the difference. Nothing we can do about that. And it doesn't really matter. It's a very slight difference, but the inside had a little bit of bleed through that I wasn't normally seeing. So this, this is a white layer they have to put down before they can put the green so that the green will show against black. You don't have that problem on the lighter color shirt. So, but again, you know, we called the whole team and asked for explanation and you know, we got some remedies on this. This goes away after one wash. You know, something like this is a few hundred dollars to run kind of the prototypes. That's what this box over here is. It's prototypes. The whole box of them, if we like them, so if it made it past me, then we start having people wear them and make sure they're wearing just like the other shirts and, and all of that. And the minimum print run we can get where they'll do the actual screen print process. They can make a digital version, one of, but I like to know exactly how it's gonna be when we order you know, thousands of them. So minimum's 25, costs a lot, you gotta set up all the machines. And uh, this one didn't make it. So we'll figure out something to do with this. Maybe we'll, we'll have the employees barcode them and maybe we'll make them available to members at a crazy cheap. Maybe I'll, most likely what happens, I usually just give them away at events. I throw these in my bags and I go, yep, let's give those out. We're also doing a forever hoodie, same design and everything. Uh, but these were already in the pipeline in production before we said, hey, we need to do a different design here. The difference with this one, you get the, the newer Murphy logo kind of at the front there. And then in the back, the aquarium co-op logo there. But we've got a new version of this and the other side coming out. So yeah, I'll clean up those. Uh, if we take a look in here, Ladybird and the 800 gallon, it's just been in disarray since Germany and getting sick. You can see that a few pieces of duckweed snuck their way in and it has created an absolute mess. That's right, Ladybird, your tank is a mess. It has started a cascade effect. Lots of heraldry, we kind of had that going, but as the light balance is no longer correct, it's really gotten out of control. So I gotta pull that out. A new development in the back, some black beard algae. Oh, great. I don't know if you get, well, it's not gonna be able to see it from this side. You can see it a little bit on the, the filter there, but really along the back. And you know, for everyone that's like, oh yeah, it's when you don't have enough flow. That's, it's pretty much only growing where the flow is on that background. So that's kind of a, an odd thing. We do have Siamese algae eaters. I don't know where they're chilling right now. They're getting a little big where they don't want to eat a lot of hair algae. Oh yeah, they're all over here. They're going, yeah, you know, we can sit over here and wait for good food instead of eating all of this that you want us to eat. That's like an inch thick of duckweed right there. Yeah, you can see the Valisneri wants to grow. The Juraparis aren't allowing that to happen. So for me to get this to grow, I need to put some rocks in. If I don't put rocks in, this is gonna happen all the time. And so you can see they dig and dig and dig and dig. Maybe they'll do it on camera for us. Ah, they're just watching my hand. And you've got things like the lights are burning out still. The light, the new LED lights are delayed. So 
all of these things that I try and orchestrate of like, yeah, we'll do that in that video. It makes sense. We'll do that. Hasn't panned out. Someone's eating neon tetras. I don't know who it is. I've never seen it happen. I don't see it happen on camera. I haven't see, ever seen Ladybird do it. I'm not seeing these guys do it. But there are clearly less than 500 that we put in here. Nobody's eaten like out of sink lists or anything. I haven't seen any bodies. That's why I'm saying they're being eaten. I mean, maybe they're, you know, for all I know, they're swimming down and under and they're getting trapped and there's 500 of them in there. I, I highly doubt that, but. Intake sponge clearly needs to be maintenance right over here. We added that on the last time we cleaned. Water's still going through. It collected all of these. So this is doing what it does, right? You can see duckweed is in it. You can see that leaves are in it. All of this would be sitting inside the cancer filter or a lot of times would jam up the screen. Now, because if you can see that slight indentation, that means this thing's pretty full of fish poop and stuff. You can actually see some of the horse face lo loaches we don't get to see very often. Enhance, right there. So they're hiding out in the algae, and uh, because of the algae, cause and effect, right? Well, the effect is the valisneria can grow along the back and the uh, terraparias don't come back here. Lots of stuff to address with this tank by, for sure. There's no, I'm not even trying to be like, hey, it looks halfway decent. I get it, it looks terrible. You know, probably the last three years or so, my tanks have looked terrible in my opinion, at least into what I know I can do bit off more that I can chew. I've traveled way too much. I've agreed to way too many things. Honestly, I think going forward, I won't do as many events, which is a catch-22 of like, oh, I don't get to do that, but my tanks will be better. I'll be happier with my tanks. You know, I won't have just moved and that. And there's, you know, the whole delay from, oh, I'm moving to now I have moved to now I got to travel a bunch to, ah, oh, I just it was out of control. We've got an Aquarium Co-op retail partner sign. In case any retail partners are showing or listening, this is what it looks like. This one's not getting shipped out because when it came from the manufacturer, had a problem with the cord. We repaired it and it's got this black plastic or, you know, shrink wrap over it to make it safe. But being that this white peels off and becomes clear, you'd see that wire. So we want to make sure we sell, or not sell, we don't sell that, give away only the best signs to retail partner stores. We'll find somewhere to use it. Then we get into here. Not much has gone on in here. I mean, that's not true. Not in the way of cleaning. So you've got still the mess that's gotta get cleaned up today. I think last time we left off this tank was green water. I'm doing everything I can to make uh, custom aquariums look terrible here, which they've been a great company to work with actually. But uh, I've been waiting on my lights and stuff and that's really what's delaying. So the water turned green with the aquarium co-op light because I had no plants in there. We put the, the light over there on that tank when we redid it in the previous video. Put in a UV sterilizer, the green's gone. There's still a little bit of algae. There's only this little light up above lighting it now. Hopefully next week I'll get my substrate and we'll start building on this tank. That's one of my, my goals. Uh, duckweed has run rampant everywhere. Got to work on cleaning some of that up today. You'll see some babies and other fish that you don't normally see because they've been breeding. I'll show you that. Lots of foods in testing. So you can see all these different foods that are kind of generic labeled. The problem is my standards are stupid high, as you saw with the shirt example. I don't want to put my stamp of approval on something that's not truly remarkable, if I can help it. Whereas I would put my stamp of approval on these guys. These guys have colored up so nicely. The Cupido cichlids, Biotodoma Cupido, that we caught in the wild in Peru. Now you remember when we caught them, they were all mostly like these uncolored, I'm guessing these are females actually, but they were just pretty drab. And I said, don't worry, they will look amazing down the road. And boy, howdy, their pinks really haven't started coming in yet, but they're, they're subtle color. It's not, obviously it's not like the orange and yellow fish are in here, but they, they will come into their own as they grow up and they get more comfortable and, and taking out the leporinus really allowed that to happen. They're getting good food now. Elmer here, even though he's getting fed, he's been getting a little bitey. I've noticed he, like one, one of these uh, platies has a little nip in the tail somewhere. And then over here I noticed these stupidly expensive fake plastic plants. Someone uh, has been going to bite town on that thing. So that's definitely why real plants won't make it. This tank needs kind of an overhaul. We've talked about even putting this tank, Dean getting this tank for his turtle and then me putting something 
different or bigger or whatever, whether it's here or kind of along the back wall, I'm not sure yet. That ticking you sound, the auto water change ran and it's calibrating itself internally. And so a lot of times you'll hear tick, tick. My goal this week is to actually start getting some of these fish out of here. Um, stuff that I know I'm not actively breeding anymore or working with and I want to um, mostly downsize. That's my biggest goal is there's still way too much in here and I think to get to a point where I'm truly going to enjoy the hobby and be able to bring you guys along for a journey and it's not just, hey look, we uh, spent all day cleaning stuff. If you can see the different leaf shape on the, the pothos, it's really been growing differently um, so all the smaller leaves are kind of growing in our kitchen or our house. And then now it's really starting to put out these like jungle vines, as I call them. Now that it's really tapped into our water. And so what I mean by that is it's got roots that go in here, go around a bunch, then come back out and onto the floor. And then we've got a bunch that come in here. And this is where I know some babies are. Um, but the duckweed, so the duckweed helped that happen. And the, the consequences of duckweed, and really I should order some more uh, ways to test oxygen so I can show this to you guys, but you can see the sponge filter's going, but it doesn't get that ripple that kind of travels further like maybe that one is. You see how you're getting ripples all the way out to maybe here, and then same with that one? Well, in this tank, you don't get that ripple very much anymore. And so you're not getting as much surface exchange, you're not getting as much current going, and it really allows the duckweed to build up. And even, even if you don't have duckweed, like this is all water sprite, same problem. That's where the air is coming out. It's kind of a slow, there's nothing, no fish, or I mean, there's, there's some plecos in here, but nothing high oxygen in here. So a lot of cool stuff going on here, but another benefit was that with all the extra cover, there are fry in here from the um, yellow labs. So that is neat. But then you also get the stagnant portion from here, like there's some algae going. If you have one aquarium, usually it looks amazing. If you have a hundred aquariums, they all look pretty not good. And then you've got things too, like this is, you know, just waiting for uh, Corvus Oscan, Joel. He moved, he's got to set up his fishery, he's building it currently. Trees just came down to build it. But I should get in here and scoop some duckweed even though they're not my plants and ah, that will be fine. And you know, yeah, they're starting to grow through. You can see the sprigs of it, but you know, I'm gonna feel bad of wasting this tote and then not growing and then him losing the plants. and. So, you know, I'll end up taking care of that as well. You know, you just see the duckweed. It's out of control. Got Anubias growing up out of the water and then you can see it's flowering. So over here, we do a little bit of brain tinkerings. What did the duckweed do? The duckweed blocked so much light and everything that we're now getting melting in my crypts. These crypts looked great. They were all like that pretty much a month ago but changing of brambers. In my fish room right now, it's about 75 degrees. And what I wanted to teach, cause I've been, I've been going through this with our heaters so often and trying to help people. You know, they're like, how could it possibly be a hundred watt heater could, uh, you know, keep a, a hundred gallon tank hot. And it, it really depends on how you're set up. How warm is the room, right? I don't have to lift it that much to get to 78 if I used a heater. Do I still have a heater over there? I do, I don't have it plugged in though. So the room is that warm. Now, the temperature of the tanks with an open, well, half open top, right? Let's let that acclimate there. 72.6. So we have over here, the top has been closed because I don't want these frogs to jump out, right? So we open this up. Have you ever opened up a tank and go, ooh, you can feel the humidity and the warmth. So now we plop this in here. 74.8 so just having a tight fitting lid right you got the the plastic back strip you got the glass 74.8 versus 72.6 so 2.2 degrees with just closing a lid and so if you're worried about energy if you're in you know another country or you just want to be efficient and not you know go broke heating an entire fish room close these tops the more the, more, the less holes you have in everything, the more heat it will retain. Uh, also know that position uh, in the room, right? So these are higher over here than these, these are lower. And if I come here, I bet you these will be a little bit cooler. 
Yeah, so these are running at 70.8. Well, 71. 70.8. I say that most fish don't have to run at 78 or more, or they can go down to like 70 degrees. So if we've just tested these ponds, and they're all at about 70 degrees, that should be a fairly good example of what maybe you'll have success with. Because we've got turtles, we've got plecos breeding, we've got shrimp breeding, we've got endlers here, we've got uh, half-beak live bearers, we've got corridoras, orange lasers in here, we've got rainbow shiners, which obviously they can go cooler. Uh, we've got mollies over there, nice big mollies. We've got rosy barbs, we've got more endlers down here. And the warmest thing in my fish room is only 75 if it has a tight fitting lid. Trying to help you guys save money and work your heaters less, get more longevity out of them. Uh, technically, the tank with the turtle might be the warmest. So let me test that to see if that's a true statement of, of if in, it's providing that benefit in my fish room. Yeah. 78. That's the other problem you run into with the overhead lighting is any spritzing on the surface of the, or the top of the tank becomes algae because you're lighting the whole tank where if I only put two strip lights on here, algae would only be like right here instead of all the way around. That's what happens when you do that. Also, you can have different zones in your room. So like I have fans going, that's where the heat kicks out. Uh, we've got more fans up in the corner. The tank with ladybird, acrylic, very thick acrylic, but there's no tops. Don't bite this ladybird. Let's see here. Yeah, we're at that 75.3. So, now don't move that, it's got duckweed on it. That's how you spread duckweed right there. Oh yeah, I need to introduce you to um, Ducky. The goldfish, he's been doing work. We got him a lot smaller. He finally polished off this aquarium where it had the duckweed problem. And then there's a bunch of duckweed poop back there. I need to get in here and gravel vac, clean this up. And this will be one of the tanks that we probably play with soon, right? Go down here and look at the crypts real quick. So here we are, we can see we've got some algae on the glass. That's pretty standard. We did a pretty major overhaul here. For the most part, all the crypts are pushing forward. Now they haven't covered all of their pots yet. And I, I realize people like that looks terrible. Don't worry, it will grow in and not look terrible. This is how do we save you money when you buy plants and don't get horrible melt and lose your plants. You know, look at this one. This one is going gangbusters. Ah, oh, the, the glare is so terrible. But really going nice in there. You know, that, that's like fully adapted crypt going, oh yeah, love and life. Then we've got some pink flamingos doing their pink stuff, making new leaves. Everything's pushing forward. I get it. We're in transition. You're going, oh, that's only two weeks. Like, yeah, wait till we check it out in like three months. Still haven't touched this tank. Still got way too much Valisneria going on. I need to get in there and give it the old Trimarino and make it so I can see in because that's the benefit of having a tank, right? Being able to see in. This is another fish species that don't like to be hot, but you know, the, the reality is most fish don't even want to be that hot. I'm not saying, you know, someone asks like what specific fish want to be hot? That's, that's a fool's errand and like, okay, well there's thousands and thousands of species. I couldn't possibly name them all. But you know, common ones, rams, apistos, discus, some plecos, and then a lot of other stuff doesn't care as much. Everything's on a spectrum though. These guys, they just need to get de-duckweeded. I probably need to remove these extra males and let uh, you know grandpa and grandma have some babies again. These came back from Peru when we bought them from the wholesaler. They were meant to go to someone besides me, but hey, guess what? They're living in my life. Originally we set all these tanks up to import some stuff and, and do it for the store and, and maybe test some things and it's set up. I got the green water going. Maybe I should do some Daphne or something. So even if I got rid of all the totes, I'm still gonna have like 36 aquariums, which is if I worked on one every single day, that's more than I can get done in a month. And that's if I did it every day. But I did run an experiment with these. Every single tank basically got a Anubius. Cause I wanted to see like, what are the odds that our Anubius just thrive? And I got different different versions, like there's a Coffifolia. And you can see it, they lose a couple leaves in the transition from immersed to submerged grown. But I think we only really lost like one. Well, it's not even lost. It's struggling to transition. Brand new leaf there, you know, but it, that doesn't look like a great plant for 
This is the test when you really don't get enough light. This light appears been burned out. And I wanted to see like, how will it do? I mean, you can barely see in there because it's so reflective, but there's almost no light. You can see the yellowing. It's not able to photosynthesize enough. And then each one of these tanks got a plant too, but the green you can barely see. You know, first I, I gotta get control on all of this because there, there's too many totes that are just don't need it. Fancy guppy, mix fancy guppies, mix fancy guppies, mix fancy guppies, and white rice fish. All right, if I don't physically start cleaning and you know reloading auto feeders and, and all of that, nothing will get done today. I'm gonna start that and then maybe we'll chime in at the end when I'm done or if, as I spot cool things, I'll point those out. So we'll be back. Thought I would show you guys feeding ladybird real quick. So I know everyone doesn't get to see it all the time. You can see all the tetras feeding from the stuff that comes out of her gills. And then I always follow it up by feeding some other foods on the other side to give her some room, but you know, since I'm filming this one, all the other fish are kind of in the action. But yeah, I wanted to get her fed because if I come in here and I start uh, cleaning the tank with the like the magnet and get in there with the sponge and uh, start removing the duckweed, she won't eat. So a lot of the room cleaned up. All right. Well, now you're going to witness the famous bag trick. This is a bag that I got some plants in from the warehouse. The goal is to remove the sponge with the minimal amount of stuff coming out. Get off there, auto-sync clips are making my job harder. You might find snails or like a bristlenose placostomus, kind of like I just found a, an auto-sync clips. Try to pull it off, minimize the damage. As you can see, fairly clean job, but this thing is coated. It's just making chocolate milk. So we're gonna go get it super clean at the like even when it's staying in my hand. Uh, we're gonna go get super clean up the sink and then I'll reinstall. All right, so now you have this sponge filter, mostly clean, there's still a little bit of algae you could pick off. What I wanted to point out, we do a super duper coarse sponge so that this, this sponge that had been a fine sponge would have already sucked itself in like this and potentially could have caused damage to the pump. Go right back in, push on. I push on extra because I don't want Ladybird to pull it off. And there you go. So you can see there's some debris coming off right now, but it will suck that back up once uh, the currents get back to where they're going. You know, what you're not seeing in the video is like, I literally spent over an hour just scooping duckweed from all the bins. And that's an hour that could have been like, yeah, let me stick some of these plants down. Let me go get some rocks and, and fix that. Let me do this, let me do that. And instead, it's all in this macro maintenance level of like, well, I better do all of this, otherwise there's a bad thing and not on the fine things. Of, Ooh, let's just make this look better. So if you have one inch thick acrylic, which you won't, but if you do, Mighty Magnets are amazing. That's what this big bad boy is. But this magnet costs me like $250. And uh, so yeah, it's Mighty Magnet. It comes with a warning, like they're, they're bad enough, it'll snap your fingers. But, uh, you know, they, they really do well. You just, on this big of a tank, it takes like 20 minutes to do a good job. It's way better than me trying to reach down here, which it's not doing a great job down here either, but that's because I don't want to pick up substrate and ram it against the acrylic. So I need to like kind of dig it back a little bit, get in there really good, and then it'll be good. But instead, I'm doing the quick fix of, all right, let's do the top top to bottom, get all the algae under control. So you can see how this would start exciting ladybird. 
and all the other fish, so they won't want to eat once you're doing this. So I, I typically do this at the end of the day, after they've already eaten and everything. By the way, if you don't know yet, the rare metal, the magnets, the strong magnets that go inside these mag floats, they're getting more and more rare, so the price keeps going up. Luckily, we bought a decent amount, but we'll run out in the next, well, it depends. If a bunch of people buy it from this, we'll run out. But um, for normal sales, we were set okay. But the pr next time we bring them in, the price does have to go up because they're just, the, the magnets are going up. But there's blue ones for acrylic, like the one I'm using. And then there's, I need to get a new mag or a new scraper on this. Um, because the green spot algae likes a brand new blade, or at least I gotta take it out and clean it. Uh, whereas like the normal brown algae is really easy. You know, we're closing and dinner, my wife's gonna be like, hey, it's dinner time soon. So it's been hours, I've been out here all day, raining pretty good. That's not even a good shot to catch them really. So let me grab a net and see how many I can get in one shot. By the way, I still love these nets. I use them all day long. I still have yet to break one. I've had some people break them and we just give you new ones, but I don't know what you guys are doing because I, I use them all the time. But if you haven't seen my video on how to catch fish, I recommend it. Set your net up as a trap, guide them with your hand. So I'm gonna set mine up kind of over here and then we've got to corral them all the way around. So like in that one, you know, we got probably 10 or 12, pretty easy, minimal impact. Now each time you take the net in and out, that will make it a little harder to catch the next batch. So try not to just lift out one at a time. Yeah, they're definitely more skittish than they were. So this time I only got three, but not ripping up the tank. So we'll talk about what I'm gonna do with this tank here in a minute. We're just gonna give it, you always, well, I always wanna give it a few minutes to see, oh, there's the corridor that was hiding out or the fish. And then I come back and, you know, catch them. We can see the, the corridoras. One's getting checked out by Elmer. Let's hope this isn't a bad interaction. Cause then I have to catch him right back out. What are you doing, Elmer? You okay with that guy? All right. You just give him the sniffer test. But I think they're really gonna love digging through this sand and, uh, cause I feed a lot of, of sinking food for Elmer. So you can see how much the algae on the top was blocking of the light. You can see it right there cause I just removed it from, from adding the fish. So over here, what would I do <clears throat> with this tank? Like I just need to start completely over you know, tear it out, bleach it, all that. And I don't think that's the answer. There's algae in here, no doubt. But with 10 to 20 minutes, I can get a lot of this algae out manually. All right, just right there, it feels like hair. And it's, it's easy to kind of clean up a section. If I, you know, do it real time, I just use my fingers kind of as a rake and you go around the plants and you can just start pulling it out. Now, the problem is it still leaves some behind. And if you don't get it all, it grows back. And so I always recommend manual algae removal first. That's my first step. And then what I, my plan is to quote unquote reset this tank is to get maybe a group of six or 10 a mono shrimp. So that's, that's gonna be, you know, up to 40 bucks. And I'm gonna put a mono shrimp in here and basically not feed the tank a whole lot. I'll feed them right at the beginning uh, just because you never know how much those particular Amanos were getting fed in the pack of Amanos at a store. But then I'm going to let them be hungry, hungry hippos and work on a lot of this for me. And hopefully in a week or two, maybe two at the most, they'll have put a big hurting on this. And you could either A, move that to the next aquarium, you know, catch them out and move them. Or B, I think I'm gonna find fish that are gonna live with these guys and just live in harmony. So there you go. So now you end up with a big old handful of hair algae. Now, if you had, you know, something to really like to eat, stuff like this, like turtles maybe sometimes, um, or, you know, you're breeding a mono shrimp or something, but you can see all the different algaes. All that algae was from the 800 gallon, lots of duckweed, pounds and pounds of it. 
I'm gonna do my last feeding for the day and uh, probably call it. It didn't get a whole lot done. Well, it's not that it, didn't get, it doesn't seem like it to me because yeah, we went on duckweed. You can never get all the duckweed in one go. And so you kind of, you end up with, I can spend hours trying to get all of it or I can start relying on goldfish. And that's, that's kind of my plan here. And you get a better look and seeing like, oh yeah, there's all those red platies I want to do something with, the teacups. I love those guys. Yeah, there's lots of shrimp in here with Joel's plants. I cleared out a bunch of uh, duckweed and shrimp I'm breeding in here too. So, so this is all pearlweed, right? And it's just floating up here. It's from a light that's miles away. You know, there's no special lighting going on. And uh, it allows all these babies to kind of go in and hide with no roots really. You see all the roots that are hanging down. And I could plant it. I could just start pushing it down to the substrate, but I kind of like this giant land mass that is really good for stuff to come in and kind of hide and, and just make sure they don't get eaten by parents. And then they grow up and they come out and they join the ranks. Yeah, I, I really like that. This I still need to get on top of right here. It's just getting, you can see a lot of snails. By the way, like graphic warning, there's too many snails in here. But uh, the reason I keep them and let them get into high numbers is they're some of the best uh, food you could be feeding turtles and so lots of calcium and crunchy shell You're good for puffers too don't get me wrong but uh, yeah those will get you know those will be good snacks there's that guy usually they run you have to make you put a camera on them they run I want to do a big custom tank for these guys that's on the hopefully putting on the kind of the back wall next to maybe that 125 more hair algae and duckweed grab that and just toss it all right, guys. Well, thank you for hanging out with me today. If you're into these long episodes of just hanging out in the fish room and hopefully, you know, it meant a lot to me when you guys were saying it helps you get motivated to get in your fish room, play with your tanks. And uh, that in turn motivated me to do it too. So, I mean, I've got people coming over as well, but it does help, you know? And uh, I appreciate everyone who kind of tells our friends and family either to watch because it's interesting or to buy from us because they're into fish. All that stuff really goes a long way and keeps it so that we're sustainable and we don't have to spend a billion dollars on you know Facebook ads or something instead we can just spend our time enjoying stuff and that's you know oh, I really see the couch right here a couch with you know you don't see the reflections in person but on camera you do but a couch watching this tank would be pretty good I still want to redo this tank I need to get the rocks and I want to take out the bubble wall and all of those things but you know we'll close this up and that'll be the end for today. Until next week, have fun, enjoy nature daily, and uh, buy all of our crap. We'll see you later. We hope you enjoyed this video. We actually picked another one that we thought you might like, so click on it right here.